Hey guys, so I'm gonna try to just do an overview on a harness that you would be getting back from us. This one happens to be a 24 valve. Um, it's for a Mark I installation. Um, it's going to be really similar as far as your connections that you have to make inside the car as any Mark IV uh, swap harness. So even a TDI, it'll be very similar. So um, if, you, if this doesn't exactly cover your swap that you're doing, there's, it's going to be real close. Um, and if, you, if it's missing something, you're always welcome to message me, uh, email me, whatever. And uh, I'll, I'll try and, and get you through, through your questions there. So anyway, um, these harnesses have two separate sections. Um, one we call the engine section. Um, it's going to be your smaller connector. And it, it only goes to the engine. Um, it has your components like your coil pack, injectors, knock sensors, crank sensor, um, things of that nature. We do not modify this um, unless there is a problem. Um, but everything is tested before it leaves. Um, the only thing on here is we remove the Mark IV coolant, or I'm sorry, the Mark IV oil pressure switch and replace it with a spade so that you can put your oil pressure switch that matches your cluster. Um, so if you've got a Mark I with a uh, cabby cluster in it, you need to have the cabby oil pressure switch so that your oil pressure system works like it's supposed to. The Mark IV switch will, won't work with your clusters. It, just doesn't it's not wired that way um, so by and large the engine side is unmodified uh, it's pretty much the way the way you pulled it out of the car the only thing we did change is we will move the MAF plug that used to be in the in the body side of the harness we move that over into the engine side so that it's a little neater and a little cleaner a little easier for you to pull through the car um, there's a t14 plug and that is going to join our um, body side to our engine side connectors. So that will need to be connected in your car. This is the body side connector of your ECU. Um, it houses your O2 sensors and throttle pedal. And then after that, we've got some flying leads. We have an OBD2 port <coughs> for your data connections. Two relays, one for our ECU and one for our fuel pump. Our fuel pump wire must be connected to your fuel pump in the car. So you're going to remove your old fuel pump wiring and your old fuel pump relay. Um, this can be as simple as pulling your relay out and cutting the fuel pump wire out of the back of the fuse box. If it's a North American built car, um, it's going to be 81 to 84 rabbits. Uh, if it's a German built car, it's probably CE1, really early CE1. You'll be able to get a pin out uh, from your Bentley for the, I think it's going to be the H plug. That's going to go to the back of the car and have the fuel pump. in it. Um, again, you'll still cut that wiring from the back of the fuse box and then splice it into our fuel pump wire here. Uh, that way your ECU is controlling it just the way we want. Um, we've got a body ground that must go to a clean chassis ground. Uh, anything we have marked body or ground must go to a clean chassis ground. Um, Got to have it. So then we have this trigger wire. We talked about the trigger wire in the other video. Um, must be connected to a power source that has power during the key on and during the start cycle. All right guys so we're inside the car here and we're going to I'm going to show you how I test for that circuit 15 power uh, that we need for that trigger wire on our swap harness so like we said before that heart that wire has to have power while the key is in the on position and in the start position 
So I've set up my little multimeter down here. It's on ohms. Right now it's showing open line. We are connected to battery power uh, to the fuse box right now. Um, and I don't have a battery connected at all right now. And I, I like to do this a lot of times if I'm not uh, sure of a of a harness or if you you know if you just don't want to risk probing and testing something while it's live you can do this you can do this test with uh, just an ohm reading um, and you've got no no risk of a short circuit or anything like that so <clears throat> we're connected to battery power here I'm connected to um, this black wire that I found coming um, out of the back of the fuse box I located in the Bentley manual it shows to be on circuit 15 here we are on the Bentley manual. We're looking at the spark plug to coil wiring. There's your coil. There is your connection at the fuse box. And here is circuit 15 and how you would find it in the Bentley manual. So we're gonna turn the key to the on position. And you see that we have an ohm reading. So we know we have power is we have a pathway going from the battery through our fuse box and to this wire while the key is in the on position. So now we're going to click one more time to the run position. And as long as that doesn't go back to open line, we have a good circuit. So there we have the same ohm reading. I'm still holding the key on right now in the crank position and we're, we're still showing uh, a good reading. So I'm going to let it go. And we return to the same position and now I'm turning it off and everything goes to open line. So this is the, the wire that we're going to use for our trigger wire on the swap harness. Source for this is your coil power wire. If you had a gasoline car, if you had a diesel car, that is going to be your fuel pump solenoid switch on the pump itself. Uh, both of those would have uh, the power we're looking for. If you're looking for it in your in your Bentley manual, there is a set of lines that run across the top of the fuse box and it says like 30, 15, 31, X, stuff like that. You're looking for circuit 15. Anywhere that comes off of circuit 15 will have the power you're looking for. Lastly, we have these bundled <clears throat> battery leads. These got to go straight to battery power, uh, whether that's your battery itself or if you're running like a fused junction block. Um, got to go straight to battery power. Uh, other than that, um, there's not too much, too much else we need to cover. Uh, these flying leads have um, an OEM tack signal, so if you're, <clears throat> if you want a tack signal. This, this signal is not going to give you anything that's going to work for your Mark I. You're going to need some sort of attack adapter. Uh, if you don't use it, just leave it coiled up. The oil pressure sensor we talked about, um, once you have your proper oil pressure sensor in place, you can connect this oil pressure um, wire that we provided. It runs right to where the Mark IV switch would have been, but you can connect this to your OEM uh, oil pressure wire in your Mark I. Same with the coolant temp gauge wire. We've already corrected the ohm difference between a Mark I uh, cluster and a Mark IV cluster, so you can connect this directly to your old Mark I coolant temp wire. And you're done. Um, nothing else to fuss with there. So that will get it in your car um, powered up. Uh, we didn't talk about your drive-by-wire pedal. If you have a drive-by-wire swap, um, most of them are except for the early, early 2.0 Mark IV cars. Um, your pedal must match your motor as far as if you have a gasoline motor, you need a gasoline pedal. If you have a diesel pedal, or a diesel car, you need a diesel pedal. Uh, they won't interchange. It doesn't matter if they're automatic or manual. Um, all the pedals work for automatic or manual for these swaps, it doesn't matter. But you must have a gasoline or a diesel pedal. They must match the, the motor you have. So if you have any other questions, um, hopefully this covered kind of what I missed in that other longer video, but um, we, can, uh, we can talk about those on 
on an email or a chat or, or whatever you need. But what we have here is a whole bunch of what not to do. Don't use these. No T-taps, no scotch locks, no wire nuts, no uh, raw connection with just tape around them. Heat shrink, sealed 3M butt connectors, and good tape. That'll give you a good crimp. It seals out any moisture, no chance of corrosion, no chance of you blaming your tuner for when the car shuts off going down the road after you hit a bump.